What's up everyone, Patrick here. Welcome back. Moving on to the next limit. We have to find this limit here as x approaches four of the square root of x to the power of three minus eight over two minus root x. So as a heads up, this limit is going to be another double rationalization limit. And there's going to be a little bit of algebra here. So notice first that if we try a direct substitution of four into the x value, we're going to get that indeterminate form of zero over zero because four to the power of three is 64. The square root of 64 is eight minus eight is zero. And then two minus the square root of four is two minus two. The denominator is going to be zero as well. And so we're going to have to get rid of those square roots here. So we have a square root of x to the power of 3 minus 8 over 2 minus root x. So let's first rationalize the denominator here. So what we would do is multiply it by the conjugate of this, which would be 2 plus root x. So we'll multiply the numerator by 2 plus root x and then the denominator as well. So it's like we're taking this whole expression, multiplying it by 1. So what would we end up with? We would have the limit as x approaches 4. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put this in front of this because we're going to actually rationalize this in the next step. So I'll put this over here and then I'll put the square root of x to the power of 3 minus 8. It doesn't matter which order. It's just because we're going to rationalize this, I'd rather just have that factor that we're going to multiply by over here, right beside that factor that we're rationalizing. And then over here, 2 minus root x times 2 plus root x, that's a difference of squares, so we only have to multiply the ends. 2 times 2 is 4, minus root x times root x is just x, like that. So at this point, we still can't really cancel anything out because we're going to have to rationalize this. So we have the square root of something minus 8, so we would multiply by the square root of x to the power of 3 plus 8. Right? We're just changing that sign in the middle. Don't get confused with this x to the power of 3. It's still under a square root. Right? It's not the third root of something. If it was the third root, then the rationalizing would be different. And I have videos explaining how to do that. This is just simply rationalizing a square root over here. So don't get confused with what's under the square root. And then the denominator, we're going to multiply by the same thing. So what would happen here, just be careful, there's going to be lots of factors. So we'd still have this factor, 2 plus root x. And then notice here we'll have root x to the power of 3 times root x to the power of 3, which is just x to the power of 3, minus 8 times positive 8 gives us negative 64. Right? This is a difference of squares. We end up with that. And then these two terms, I'm going to keep separate like that. And then we'll have the square root of x to the power of 3 plus 8 like that. And now, if you notice, what we can do is this over here, we can factor as a difference of cubes, right? x to the power of 3 minus 64, we could rewrite that as x to the power of 3 minus 4 to the power of 3. Right, a difference of cubes, if you remember. The formula is this. Like that. So we'd end up with x minus 4, like that. And then we'll have x squared plus, um, so the a is like x, the b is like 4, so we'll have x squared plus 4x plus 4 to the power 2 is... 16 like that. So this bracket factors into these two brackets. So if we continue this limit up here, we'll have the limit as x approaches 4 of 2 plus root x. And then this factors into this. So we'll have x minus 4, x squared plus 4x plus 16. All over, now notice the x minus 4 and then we have a 4 minus x, so to make them equal, we could take out a negative from this. So I'm going to do that in this step. To get the x minus 4 like that, and then we'll have still the square root of x to the power of 3 plus 8. Notice those cancel out now. And now we can do 
a direct substitution into everything because notice we're not going to have a denominator of zero anymore. So we would end up after doing the direct substitution two plus root four, and then we'll have um, root four to the power of two. Uh, sorry, not root four. We're uh, subbing in four for x, my bad. I got confused with this root four. So we'll have four squared plus four times four plus 16 like that, all over minus, right? There's like a negative one there. And then we'll have the square root of four to the power of three plus eight like that. So we would end up with, let's do this in steps, two plus two. Then over here, we'll have 16 plus 16 plus 16, which would give us 48 all over this negative. Let's just bring up here. And then four to the power of three is, um, is what, 64? The square root of 64 is eight. So we'd end up with eight plus eight, like that in the denominator. So this would give us negative four, 48 over uh, 16, right? And so notice 48 divided by 16 is three, negative four times three gives us negative 12. Right, so that ends up being the final answer. All right, so quite a bit of algebra here. A student sent this limit to me, so just wanted to go over it. A little more practice dealing with double rationalization and to not get confused with this x to the power of three that's under the square root. If you do the double rationalization, be careful with your algebra. Negative 12 is the final answer.